My dearly beloved in Christ, Holy Mother Church places before us during the season of Advent the figure of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was a very austere man. He lived in the desert for a number of years before he began his public mission of preparing for the way of our Lord. And he lived a very penitential life. And the people could see this in him. They knew his reputation of being uh, very sacrificing and self-effacing. His entire mission was to prepare the people for our Lord. The selection we have in today's gospel is the first six verses of the third chapter of St. Luke's gospel. And the evangelist referring to St. John the Baptist quotes from Isaiah the prophet. In the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, verses 3, 4, and 5, we have the words that are quoted by St. Luke, that St. John was, quote, the voice of one crying in the desert, make ready the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. So here St. Luke is telling us that those words of Isaiah were written concerning the precursor of our Lord, John the Baptist. What does it mean that he says, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low? One explanation that I read is the mountains and the hills being knocked down, being brought low, would indicate the need for us to conquer our pride, to bring down our pride, which is like the, the mountains and the hills, thinking ourselves better than we are, taking pride. So every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the valleys shall be filled. We fill the deficiencies in our lives with virtue by the practice of virtue, striving to acquire the virtues, to become Christ-like, Mary-like, to acquire these virtues. We are filling those valleys, so to speak. And the crooked ways shall be made straight. When I read that, it reminds me of a saint, Saint Aloysius. And Saint Aloysius was also very penitential, even though he was known to have lived such an innocent life. And one of his fellow religious, fellow members of the Jesuit order where he was in Rome in the 1500s, said to Aloysius, why do you do so much penance? Certainly you've already atoned for any faults of your past life. Why do you do so much penance? And he said, I'm like a crooked piece of iron that needs to be hammered and straightened. So what is he referring to here, how we are so crooked? It is original sin. The sin of Adam and Eve, which all of us have inherited. And we have also inherited the effects of original sin. Primary among which are the disorders that we are familiar with our fallen human nature, what theologians refer to as concupiscence, that strong inclination or attraction for evil. So indeed, we are very crooked, and we need to be straightened out. And we do that straightening with prayer, with the sacraments, with penance. You see why Holy Mother Church requires us to do penance, such as during Advent, the ember days that we just had, the vigils, fasting and abstinence, abstinence on the Fridays of the year. We need to do penance because we have this fallen human nature. So he goes on quoting from Isaiah, the crooked ways shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Trying to smooth out those rough bumps in our character, our, uh, again, 
character or qualities about our lives, our personality? What are the things that are annoying to other people, maybe even to ourselves, that we need to smooth out, that we need to correct? So this is what he is referring to. All mankind shall see the salvation of God. Now, St. John the Baptist was very strong in his preaching. I would like to read to you from the New Testament from beginning with verse 7. In other words, the selection for today's gospel is chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. But I would like to continue to read what St. Luke tells us about this ascetic figure of John the Baptist. He said, therefore, to the crowds that went out to be baptized by him, brood of vipers, who has shown you how to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits befitting repentance. And do not begin to say, we have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. For even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that shall not bring forth fruit is to be cut down and cast into the fire. Now, with strong words like that and other similar preaching, you would think that he would be driving people away. But just the opposite happened. Even though he castigated them as a brood of vipers and so strongly rebuked them for their sins, they were drawn to him. They were drawn by his holiness. And reading on, it is interesting what the people said. And the crowds asked him, saying, What then are we to do? And he answered and said to them, Let him who has two tunics share with him who has none, and let him who has food do likewise. And then came the publicans also to be baptized, and they said to him, Master, what are we to do? But he said to them, Exact no more, than what has been appointed you. And the soldiers also asked him, saying, And we, what are we to do? And he said to them, Plunder no one, neither accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your pay. Now, these words are very interesting for several reasons. First of all, St. John promotes justice. Notice the tax collectors, the publican, publicans. He says, Exact no more than what is assigned. Be just, be fair. And he also promotes charity, to give to those who have not. But all of these people coming to him, what did they ask him? What am I to do? What are we to do? And this is very important. Applying it to contrition, we have, in addition to contrition, we have what is called the purpose of amendment which is part of contrition, the purpose of amendment. And that is the fruit of contrition. For someone just to be sorry, to say, I'm sorry, but not to amend their lives would indicate that that contrition is sterile and really it's not true contrition. It's maybe feeling, but it doesn't produce any results. And the people didn't just go to St. John the Baptist and say, I want to be baptized, I'm sorry for my sins. They said, what am I to do? What do I do from this point forward? And that's something very important for us to consider. What am I to do? I'm not only obliged to be sorry for my sins, to confess my sins, to make good confessions, but I must amend. And that process of amendment is an ongoing practice for our entire lives, always striving to improve, always striving to be more pleasing to Almighty God. And as I said earlier, always striving to be more and more Christ-like. There's always room for improvement. So let us imitate these people who went to St. John the Baptist to be baptized and who took his preaching to heart and amended their lives. They were sorry for their sins and they committed sin no more. They amended their lives. And those were the people 
who were really prepared for our Lord, for his teaching, and to accept the gospel that he came on earth to preach. So this is what Advent is about, imitating these people who went to St. John the Baptist and wanted to improve, wanted to amend. May we also do so, and do so for our entire lives, because we never reach perfection, but we ought always to strive towards it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.